Since the COVID virus took hold, the WHO, governments and health bodies have been reminding us to wash our hands. But when it came to cleaning surfaces and home hygiene, at a time when supermarket shelves were becoming bare of cleaning products, fake news filled the gap. Dr Lisa Ackerley was one of the people that the general public turned to for proper advice and reminded them of something that had been lurking in the back of their cupboard all along. I was being asked the question from many people on the radio, uh, ordinary consumers panicking because they couldn't get hold of their typical products that they use. And so I started to say to them, but you've probably got the, the ideal products in your cupboards. A lot of people have been a bit frightened about bleach. Um, and so it's really helping people to understand how to use it safely and where it can be used. Unilever, the consumer goods giant behind names like Domestos and Purcell, already had an unbranded website called Cleanopedia, offering cleaning hints and tips. They realised consumers wanted more information about coronavirus hygiene. We realised that people are confused. Uh, they couldn't navigate on the web and find clear answers. And we said, you know, we started this business as a hygiene business at the time. Cholera was still uh, present in the UK. This is our moment and we should now really focus on helping the people in the UK with their hygiene needs and give them service advice. And let's not do this branded, but let's make it a public service message, uh, you know, supported by experts who help build the messaging around targeted cleaning. And we do this because it was needed. Unilever engaged the services of Dr. Ackley to explain the need for targeted hygiene, backed up with information on using traditional cleaners like bleach. There is so much fake news around COVID that we felt we need to strengthen the voices of the real experts and give our muscle, put our muscle behind them to land the real messages, what people can do to protect themselves in this very difficult environment. My whole persona is all about trying to make hygiene as simple as possible. The journey of the germ starts from the moment you get home. Initially, the messages were very much wash your hands frequently, which, you know, to my mind doesn't actually mean anything. So I think explaining a little bit more about when washing hands is really important. And that's part of targeted hygiene, because we don't want to be wa people washing their hands all day long, constantly. The unbranded campaign has seen a raft of content online with a major social campaign featuring digital adverts. Although it's unbranded, we treat this as a very professional marketing campaign. Multimedia, well thought through messaging, working with you know, respectable influencers in this space and run it with all the professionalism we would run any commercial campaign. Normally, a commercial campaign would use influencers to drive sales. That's something that both sides say is not the point. This is a real crisis and we generally wanted to help and not create the impression that we do this to sell more product. We do this because we understand cleaning and we can help the people with their cleaning knowledge. What we really need to be careful of is that um, a brand looks as if it's getting on the bandwagon. And I think that's why it's so good not to have anything branded at this point, because what we're trying to do is help the country, if you like, uh, or the world even, and you know, to make sure that they know that they have got a product that is going to work for them to disinfect surfaces. And Unilever isn't the only brand that's educating the consumer. Creative agency AKQA brought together Heart17 and the UNDP with games maker Mojang. They built Blockdown within the world's biggest game, Minecraft. We felt like there was a huge opportunity to use the game's simplicity and gameplay features. There has been a lot of information out there uh, pertaining to social distancing and its effects on the pandemic. But a lot of that information can be quite dense and inaccessible to younger audiences. So we felt by using Minecraft, one of the world's most loved games, um, to talk about that issue, we could really make a positive impact uh, in the way people speak about and behave uh, during this pandemic. 
Sounds good, but how do you turn a pandemic into a game that brings a broad understanding to a younger audience? We built a map in Minecraft where it's actually an enclosed village where um, we have a hundred villages and one zombie. And after a few minutes, if left unchecked, the whole village starts to get infected uh, and turn into zombies, essentially. Um, that is not a good thing. We added um, kind of interactions to the map. So I could actually start to put villagers in their own houses. Um, you know, a player can effectively create quarantine measures for these villages and even to some extent, create an entire lockdown, which a lot of the world is facing right now. And if you've got zombies, you're going to need healthcare. So the team created a working zombie hospital. Well, you would, wouldn't you? This is a very basic but powerful prototype that explains the effects of social distancing and how that can impact. So why is this an effective way for the partners to engage with Minecraft and its audience? I think the audience of Minecraft is one of the most creative and astute um, uh, communities in the world. I think they would be able to draw the relationships to the current crisis. And um, we really hope that actually, not only will they understand the, the implications uh, that are being spelled out in the game, but they, they can expand on it and start to create content on their own and start meaningful conversations about social distancing. It's a unique kind of space for Minecraft to become um, more than a game and become a tool of, of purpose and of good.